Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Dan Reacts. This is going to be a series where I just talk to you guys. I just take a moment and talk to you guys about my favorite shows, you know, incidents that happen in the world. If you guys have a topic that you want me to discuss or talk about, please leave it in the comment section. Cause I would love to know what you guys, you know, I love to know what you guys think and what you guys know why I have discussion about. So d don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And this episode, basically, we're going to be talking about season four of Orange and the New Black. This is actually one of my favorite shows on Netflix. Aside from, like, all the Marvel stuff, like Daredevil and all that. Other than that, this is basically one of my favorite shows. So this should go without warning, without, without saying, this is spoiler alert, spoiler warning. We're going to be talking about the entire season four, everything that happened. So if you, so if you love Orange and the New Black, but you haven't finished season four... You might want to hold on the. You might want to hold down on the video until you finish watching episode thirteen. So you know, spoiler warning. You know, I'll give you a few seconds. You know, process that to like, okay, you know, pause the video, watch our watch the whole season, and come back. Okay, and we should be back now. Okay, so basically, the first episode of season four starts off where season episode the last episode of season three ends up, where they're all leaving the prison to go to the pool thing, and Alex is basically being choked to death by the hitman. Now, the crazy lady that Alex first thought was after her, that, that, that first thought was the hitman, actually comes and saves her, and basically stomps the shit out of the hitman, and basically, they all think that the, they all think the hitman's dead. Which, of course, I will be scared, too. Like, he wasn't moving, like, he was blowing his face. They all thought he was dead. So, basically, they, what I thought was very stupid, that they basically pushed him into, like, the corner of the greenhouse and hit him. Until a further note, until like further date, which I thought was really stupid. Like, if you kill somebody, especially a guard, no less, why would you hide them in some place that's so obviously accessible? So basically, when Alex goes back to basically, you know, figure out what to do, turns out he's not a lot. He's not really dead, but sort of alive, but sort of dead. So basically, what Alex had to do is basically, you know, choke him to death. Basically, you know, had to like, like basically cuff his oxygen by putting like covering his mouth and all that. For which, when she actually does kill him. I actually really, really like that performance of how, like, her reaction of, holy shit, I just killed a guy, holy shit, I just did this. Her reaction was, I actually loved her, like, performance and her acting. That She was actually really spot on of how, like, she, like, how a person would react when they kill somebody. Because they were like, she was like, oh my gosh, I killed somebody. Oh, she was, like, panicking, like, frolicking. But it turns out, she was, she, someone else saw her do it. No, the old, the old lady that, you know, with the little deep voice like this and, like, all that saw her, you know, kill her. And she was like, okay, you know. We can't leave the body here. We have to dig. We have to dig a grave. Scratch that. Six graves. So basically, what happened? They act, they actually have to chop him up into little dead bot into little pieces. For which, again, performance of that. Basically, Alex, the crazy girl, and the deep voice girl, basically chop him up and like basically put him in like you know little bags and scatter them you know, on the garden. For which. I actually enjoy the performance again because, you no know, chopping up a dead body it really you know takes a toll on you. And I like I really like I I liked and disliked like a little bit like how I thought they'd be a little bit more traumatizing. That I thought that like, they would act a little bit more traumatized. I mean the 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 deep throat girl yeah I really wouldn't see her being traumatized because it seemed like she does before like she could talk like she she knew like she does before. But the other two I would expect like a lot more you know traumatizing you know like ex like expression like holy fuck I just killed somebody, like, what the fuck? And basically, stuff goes on that's not really important, but the other important part is the whole, the, the rising of the gangs, basically. So basically, with the new inmates, basically, most of the inmates are of Spanish descent. And of course, those new inmates kind of bonded with the old Spanish inmates, and basically, they formed basically a giant gang. And basically, that's actually, I actually didn't really like how, like, how, like, the gangs were, like, you know, the operate. Like, I would expect, like, a lot more, like, aggressive approach. For I would love, love to see, because, like, there were three gangs that developed within the series. There were, basically, it wasn't really, like, the black gang didn't really develop much. It was more of, like, the white hate group gang and the Dominican-Spanish gang, basically. Those two groups actually, like, rose a lot more and developed a lot more rather than the black gang, which I really want to see, like, an equal rise of all three of the gangs. I eventually want to see, like... They actually hinted and showed a little bit of, like, falling out, how, 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 like, all the gangs hate each other, and they were at each other's throats, and basically they were, like, you know, at it, at it, at it, at it, at it, but I would love to see, like, a little, I, wa I want to see, like, a lot more of that, like, a lot more, like, they're, like, take, like, hitting each other, hitting each other, like, constantly butting heads, but, yeah, I sort of, like, saw that a little bit, but I hope that they, you know, elaborate more on that on Season 5, of how, like, the gangs kind of, like, rise a little bit more, and, like, they realize that there can't, there can't be 
three separate gangs. They, they can't be, like, three separate cliques. There needs to be one head click of the person. And I'd love to see, like, those, like, them fighting out for it. And that would be, like, a great premise for Season 5. Like, all these, like, main characters, you know, fighting for top power. Fighting to be, like, you know, the top person at the prison. And basically what happens next is, with all this, Rice is kind of like the white hate group. Because basically the new some of the new prisoners were like the nazism you know basically like nazi white power kind of ruling people and i love to see like how they like since piper you know was was like getting a, she had like a big dick moment like she was getting a little bit too powerful like she like she got a little bit over her head like oh yeah i just got ruby rose throw it in max i'm all powerful oh, i'm all badass oh, blah, blah, blah. and basically i liked how basically they like the 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 i think the spash gang proved to her and basically showed Piper that this shit's like you're like you're not you know one person against an entire clique isn't gonna work and I loved how basically they put Piper in her place they were like we're not you see, see the white hemisphere group was actually facing off against everyone else because they basically think that they're the top they're a top person they're the best they basically going after everyone else and I would love to see basically a falling out so basically the white the, the Spanish group basically showed Piper basically proved to her that like, you, you're not top. Like, like one person against 50 of the entire clique won't work. And they basically proved to Piper and basically branded Piper. Because cause the white, because, like, the white made Piper leader. And the Spanish group was like, nah, -uh, this shit's not going to happen. And we're going to prove a message to you by putting a swastika, by basically branding and burning a swastika on Piper. And basically, they, that's, a, that's, like, another hint of a falling out, like... They're like, do you really think that the, the white supremacist group is really going to take that, and like, have one of their own, you know, tortured and harassed by another group? And basically, we all know what you're thinking. For those who actually finished watching Orange and New Black, that one scene in episode 12 and 13, that, ent that entire, those entire episodes, get ready, because I'm about to explain a whole lot. I loved 12 and 13 because of that scene. Because that, that scene is actually very real to real. It actually really spoke. It actually really was actually something that actually happens in real life. Like how, spoil, how, ready? Ready? P dies. Okay. Basically, P wasn't doing anything wrong. If you look at the episode, yeah, see, see P? The, the one that was in relationship with the Asian girl, she dies by a guard accidentally killing her. Because the guard basically, you know, it was a, it was something that actually happened in real life. Not like it would happen in prison, but it actually happened to, like, another individual in real life. Of how a police officer basically choke, accidentally chokes, you know, a perp to death because of, like, what the fuck. Because basically, what happens is, Crazy Eyes is going batshit insane. Crazy Eyes is basically going totally insane, and she's like, I did a bad thing, you know. Before all that, Crazy Eyes was forced to fight, you know, a person. And Crazy Eyes going crazy, like, I did, like, I did a bad thing. I was forced to fight a person. I did a bad thing. Blah, 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 blah. And P, you know, the guards are, like, trying to, like, bring, you know, like, Crazy Eyes to calm down. P's like, hey, you know, let me talk to her. You know, she's not, she, she just, she's fine. Let me talk to her. Let me calm her down. And basically what happens, the guard basically takes P, throws her to the ground, and basically just pins her down, putting his leg on her back, and looks like a hand to her throat, and she was like, hey, you know, get off of me, and she was basically saying, hey, you know, stop, stop, you know, she's like, hey, you know, get off me, it hurts, stop, you know, I can't breathe, get off me, get off me, get off of me, and basically, hold up, hold up, let, let me rewind this, hold up, see, yeah, see, season four, coming June 17th, you know, every past, hold up a second, guys, BRB. Okay, guys, I just had to restart, you know, the video, because I, I actually want to have, like, the, the Season 4 uh, trailer play as I'm discussing this, so I had to restart the video and all that. So, as I was saying, the security guard pinned her to the ground, put his knee on her back, and his hand to her neck, and basically, you know, trying to get Crazy Eyes off her with the other hand, and not realizing that she's putting his entire body force on P, on her, basically, and she's saying, get off me, get off me, it hurts, stop, I can't breathe, get off me. And you see her struggling, and you, like, see her, like, like going, like, you know, trying to breathe, and he just won't get off her. He's not realizing that he's choking her to death. He only realizes it until, basically, another security guard basically tackles him to the wall, like, hey, you know, get the fuck off her. And it was not until, you know, they real, it's not until they look and realize, holy shit, she's dead. And, like, of how that, you see, like, the, the girl, I think it's her, I think... 
I'm not sure because I watched I watched it yesterday, so my memory's a little bit hazy. But I think she, I think it was her. No, not not her. The one before, <laughs> the one that was mopping. It was either her or the other girl basically starts bawling, crying because her best friend, her friend, is basically dead on the on the cafeteria floor because of like the insolence and ignorance of a security guard. And what really basically is a really touching moment because that thing actually happened in real life. At that where a security guard, or not really security, a police officer, choked, basically used excessive force and choked a person, a person of color no less, to death. Even though the person was has hands up in the air and basically verbally confirming that he cannot breathe, he this hurts, he cannot breathe, verbally telling the officer that he can't breathe, please get off me. He wasn't showing any force. He wasn't you know doing anything. He wasn't like you know excessively showing any force, he wasn't being aggressive, he was calmly saying, I can't breathe, please get off me, I can't breathe, yet the police officer didn't listen and kept continuing, and that, and that sadly cost him his life, and we see how Orange and New Black interprets that incident into the show, and I think they, that their performance, the actors, well done, per, I mean, well done on that performance, so basically in episode 13, we see how the incident, how basically everybody reacts to the incident, and as usual, as expected and usual, they didn't react very well. They're like, what the fuck, you know, why the fuck did you do this? You killed her, basically, you know. And basically, what really, like, kind of, like, like hit me, like, kind of, like, got me to feel, and, like, I'm pretty sure got everyone to feel the lack of respect that the prison kind of had. Like, she was still on the floor in the cafeteria well into episode 13. Like, the, like they knew, the prison knew, like, everyone in the prison knew, and even the staff knew, that she was dead, still on the floor. But they didn't do anything until, like, almost to the end of episode 13. So that means that she lied dead in that cafeteria for, like, almost an entire day. They didn't, you know, I like, I mean, yeah, they covered her up and all that, but the lack of respect of at least moving her body to another location. Like, I can understand that, okay... It takes time for the coroner or, like, the ambulance to come to pick up the body. But the least you can do is take her off the floor and put her somewhere, you know, more respectful. Like, there's a chapel there. You could have put her in the chapel. That would have been a lot more respectful than just leaving her on the floor. And what happens is they're giving a press release saying, okay, so they're giving a press release of the incident. Basically, it was an accident. But the press and all that, naturally, that, that happens a lot, to, a little bit too much in the real world. The press... And, like, the corporations were like, okay, we're going to make it look like he was a monster. That he was a rogue. That he was, you know, out of control. And, basically, he did this. He's all bad. He's a monster. And he basically killed her. And, basically, they were going with that role. And they also going with the route that, oh, she was a dangerous convict. She had a ship. She was going to him. It was necessary for him to do that. Even though all of that was complete and utter bullshit. And that happens a lot too much in media today. And that's why I really, really do not like the media that much. Because the media will twist and turn the stories of actual tragic events to make it seem so much more and so much convoluted and, like, make a giant story just to sell papers. Like, for instance, the Orlando incident that happened not just not long ago of how a shooter goes to Orlando Club and basically, basically caused a mass shooting, one of the biggest mass shootings in American history... And already, the media has, like, five different stories of what happened. That shouldn't... that the, Why the media creating five different stories? The media basically created, like, all the stories, like, oh, he was in tie with ISIS. Oh, he was, you know, a crazy person. Oh, he was homophobic. Oh, he was secretly gay. Already, like, the first two days, I saw on, like, all these social media posts, I saw on Facebook, Twitter, all this, that there were, like, five different, you know, theories and incidents of what happened where there really shouldn't. There should be one strict story, one story of what happened, not... All these thinking and all what up this, what up this. No, it should be one strict story of what happened. And that's what happened on the New Black. One thing happened that was strict and clear. The guy didn't have enough training. He accidentally killed her. It was clearly his fault because she cl clearly gave verbal verbal confirmation that she cannot breathe. That this is physically painful to her and her life is at risk. And he did not listen. So technically, he is at fault. But no, they're making it seem that, oh, maybe she's at fault. Oh, no, he's, a, he's crazy. He's rogue. No, he wasn't crazy. He wasn't rogue. He wasn't like a dangerous society. He was scared. He didn't know what to do. He did not listen. He did not have the proper training. 
So yeah, I think maybe he should lost he should lost his job and maybe you know suffer you know legal action, maybe a little jail time and all that. But I don't believe that he should have you know all these big lies to you know make him seem worse. I mean yeah, maybe you know he loses the job and get let's say you know two or three years in prison. But the media goes the outlook that oh yeah he's a big criminal, oh he's crazy, he's you know out of control. That could potentially mean more time for him, more you know ignorant ignorant, stupid, more time for him, more trouble in his life that really needs to be. And basically what happens next is when Caputo goes to the, to the press conference, what happens is, is something that, again, happens a lot of time in media, where he basically says, oh, it was an accident, it wasn't his fault, he's not going to get fired, he's just going to be, you know, a few days suspended and all that, blah, blah, blah. Which is really fucked up, but again, it happens a lot of times in the real world. Where the cop that basically d had the same incident as this one, where he verb, where he accidentally choked, you know, he choked a perp to death, even though the perp physically said that he could not breathe, you know, she didn't get fired, he didn't get nothing, he was back, you know, doing his job the next few days, and that's exactly what happens in this, basically. Caputo says he's not gonna get fired, he's gonna, get, he's gonna take like a little suspension a few days and come back to work. And basically, that got the entire prison up in arms. See, right, that's actually one of the scenes where the entire prison goes up in arms. Where they're like, what the fuck? They, they didn't even say her name, which is very disrespectful. They didn't even say her name. They just said, you know, somebody died. They say a prisoner died. They didn't even say her name, which is super, super fucked up and disrespectful. At, at least, at least, give her give your condolences on, on the media, get on air, and say, you know... Give you no know, share her life because she's still a person. It doesn't matter if you're a prisoner, or a convict, or anything else. You're still a person. You're still a human being. You have a life, a family, at least people that care for you, especially her because she had a father who was a military general. The you have people that care for you, so you're at least still a person. And the entire prison basically starts a riot. Basically, they all go on the riot and just basically swarm the prison, go on the riot, and corner these two officers, the female officer and the the one the other officer who was clearly batshit insane. Cause I I want I want I don't know how to explain it, but this one officer was you you'll see it when you watch the episode is plainly batshit insane, and they corner them and he had to have even if you're an officer, a law enforcement officer in like you know. A correctional facility officer, you're not allowed to have a firearm anywhere near the prison, and he he still had it under the pretense that it is for his safety. And before I continue on, let me go and restart the video once more so you guys can see the trailer again. So, be okay, right everyone. back, continuing on where I left off. So, yeah, correctional facility officers aren't allowed to have any type of firearm. I, I, at least, at least I don't think. I mean, I I don't know much about you know correctional facilities. Or you know the procedures of law enforcement within correctional facilities, but I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to have firearms near the prison because they could potentially you know cause hazards. And he had fire. He basically brought in an illegal firearm to the prison on the pretense that he was scared. You're a correctional facilities officer. You are trained to deal with inmates, both big and strong. You're both trained to subdue and calm an inmate. You do not have you know. Like, you no, know, any right to have you know, a lethal weapon. I mean, you're trained to subdue an inmate non-lethally. There are no reason that you should have a lethal weapon anywhere near the prison. So basically, the weapon is this around him, and one girl, and he's basically about to take out his gun. Which, of course, that's not okay. That You know shit's gonna go down. The, he then reaches for it and basically pulls it out of his holster. And one of, the, one of the girls, I think the young one, the one that he basically tortured that season, pushes him, and he basically, the gun basically flies on the ground. And basically, the, um, the the girl that was pregnant before, she basically picks it up. And, the, you know, her, the, the the leader of the Spanish gang, her, she's like, hey, you know, why don't you give that gun to somebody, you know, who's more experienced? And she's like, nah, I got this. Basically, takes the gun, points to the guards. I'm like, okay, the l lady, get on the ground with her hands on the air. And basically, points the gun to the crazy, to, to basically the crazy, cr corrupt officer. And basically cocks the gun. And basically, that's where the episode ends. And that's where season 5 is going to pick up. Of how she basically points the gun to him. Will she shoot him and kill him or not? And this one scene, I really, you know... It, it could have impacted me more 
if small details or like small characters were changed. For instance, we all know P was going out with the Asian girl, right? So, and the guy, the officer that killed P by accident was like the little, the, well, the kid basically, the twenty-year-old kid who basically was scared and didn't know what to do. What would have made that scene a lot more powerful and a lot more, you know, heartwarming and a lot more like what actually made it a lot more better and what brought in more discussion and more debate on what's happening in season five? If it, if the roles were a little bit changed, like if it was the the kid officer, the the one who accidentally killed P on the ground on his knees. And the Asian girl holding the gun to his head. That would have made it a lot more powerful. Because it made you think, like, she had the gun. She could potentially kill the person that killed the one that she loved. But then again, she is a pacifist. She is a pacifist character. She does, not, she does not believe in violent acts. She doesn't believe in things being solved by violence. But, you know, the person that... She loved P. She was basically in love with P. She wants to spend her life with P. And she died at his hands. And basically, his life is now in her hands. And that one made a lot more of a big discussion and a lot more of debate on what's going to happen in Season 5. Will she pull the trigger and kill the person that killed the one she loved? Will she, you know, put the gun down and basically said, okay, I'm not doing this, I can't kill him. But if she... Let's, let's think about that for a second. Let's, let's go with both scenarios. She pulls the trigger and kills him. Then prison, the entire prison basically goes on a giant-ass riot. And, of course, they're going to bring in SWAT and all that. And, of course, you know, the incident will be, you know, dissolved very quickly. And, basically, most likely, she'll be sent to Max. Sent to Max for basically killing an officer. And most people in the... In the... The most people that we like, like, the leaders will most likely also go to Max for help... For basically orchestrating a riot. But, if we look at that she didn't kill him, you know, they might, you know... She might, you know, put the gun down and basically try and try to talk everybody down. For which, I don't really think that's going to work. Because if she tried to talk everybody down, they're going to be like, no, fuck this. There's no justice. They didn't care for her. They basically said, fuck P. We're not caring for P anymore. Fuck her. She's not a person. And they'll go off and riot and possibly kill him anyway. But, when, you know, when, but then the SWAT will most likely come in once again. And she might, you know, try to, like, talk him down. She might, like try, like, you know, still be in the show. She might still be, you know, minimum, while everyone else is still a maximum. And, but, and, but yet, she has to still, you know, think of the decision, live with the fact that she almost took a life. For which, I don't know, it can go both, that, that was my opinion, that, it should have went, you know, it should have been like that, but I'm still kind of curious of why did the pregnant lady, you know, the one, the, the, the was pregnant lady, have, you know, to, she, like, why did she pick up the gun? Like, what beef does she have? The, as far as I saw in the, in the show, that corrupt cop didn't even look in her direction. So what, you know, means or purpose does she have for harming him in any way other than, you know, to gain popularity? It would have been a lot more, you know, if you want to keep the corrupt cop there, like, in that scene, you could at least change the pregnant lady and switch it to that woman, that, that, look, that girl who the corrupt cop was basically harassing. And that would have been, like, a lot more. But then if they went with that route, it would have been pretty clear that she was shot and killed him. So, basically, I have no idea when Season 5 is going to, you know, come up. But if I had to guess, Season 5 will come up next year. Most likely the beginning of next year. If I had to say, I would say same time. March, June, you know, around there. Because I know that the holidays and, you know, summer and all that, that's when Luke Cage, the Netflix series Luke Cage, premieres. And I think they're going around. I think they're going Luke Cage, Orange and New Black. They know Iron Fist or another Jessica Jones or another Daredevil for that matter. So that is what I think of season four of Andre New Black. I hope I covered all the major events. I tried to cover like all the major scenes and all the major events in this season. If I missed any, you know, please leave in the comment section and I'll you know I'll try talking about it again in the next you know Dan reacts. If I, you know, accidentally mistake the names, I apologize. I'm not good at names at all. I'm horrible at names. If you have any other discussions or any other topics that you want me to talk about or discuss, please don't hesitate to leave me in the comment section. I will always love to know what you guys are thinking. I would love to know what kind of topics you guys are interested in. And I'll try my best to, you know, read up and research on the topics. I can give you guys a really great discussion on it. So, thank you everybody for sticking with me. Thank you for all for watching. Don't forget to click the like button. Don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't. You know, I'll definitely be back with more Uncharted 4 videos. And definitely have more JoJo Bizarre Adventure. Most likely when it comes out on June 28th. 
So once again, everyone, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Please, please go watch Orange and the New Black if you haven't. I mean, I mean, <laughs> if you haven't seen Orange and the New Black, then you, you have to. It's really good. It's a really good show. The actors are superb. The setting, everything about it is just superb. The actors, the performances, they're just superb. And it's a really, I, re I really recommend the show if you haven't watched it yet. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll be seeing you all in the next Uncharted video. Peace out, everyone. Have a marvelous, marvelous day.